Hey everyone! So in this video I'll be showcasing a game I've been developing over the last few years in my spare time. I will be going through the development journey for the project in a bit, but before we get into that I'll first showcase what the current state of the project is in. Alright, so this is a game I've been developing in C++ from scratch without the aid of a game engine. It was initially meant to be a small project to learn C++, as well as learn how a game is made from the ground up, but it soon turned into something I've been continuously working on as a creative outlet, for not only furthering my programming skills, but also learning some basic art, animation, music, and sound editing. So as of now, this project has all the building blocks necessary to make some sort of 2D platforming adventure. However, there's still a long way to go before any of this is playable. Alright, so what you're looking at now is the earliest point version of the game. To get to this point, I was largely following a tutorial series I found on YouTube to familiarize myself with SDL2. I'm not going to get into the technicals of what that is, but all you need to know is it's what the game uses to communicate with the keyboard, mouse, and sound devices, etc, etc. In total, there's 71 point versions between the first and latest version, so for the interest of time, I'll just showcase a couple of these versions to illustrate the journey the project has gone through over the last three years. A lot of the early development stages you're watching now mainly involve implementing the groundwork of a simple game engine. That means working on things such as gravity, camera logic, NPCs, or a projectile system. So there isn't that much to see here. Also, since I didn't have much direction at this point of development, most of my time was spent going on countless tangents, working on features that were scrapped shortly after introducing them. This knockback and flashing effect that occurs when a player collides with an enemy being one example of that. Now that brings us to Alpha 3.5, which was the period where I developed the interest to learn to draw and animate. Pretty much everything you're looking at now was drawn by me, and I think it's pretty safe to say I had no clue how to draw. This was my attempt to draw a crab made out of rock, but instead turns out looking a lot more like a pile of cement in a colander. Drawing skills aside though, this was the first grounded NPC that could actually move freely around the world, unlike the stationary bat you've already seen. Other than that, I had also reworked projectiles to be affected by gravity, bounce off terrain, etc, etc. But that's all boring stuff. What isn't boring though, is... A so, abilities. They can be as simple as a damaging spell, or something a little bit more complex. Ophelios has access to five different weapons, each with a different passive and active ability. As of right now, I'm with it. Let's take a closer look at each Moonstone weapon. Five minutes later. Landing any ability other than with Gravitum will store many chakras. Krishandam's active ability creates a turret trap that activates to shoot the uh, nearest target with your, your offhand weapon built. Looks like Leona's feeling the gravity of this situation. Every game has some form of abilities these days and I have been keen to try making my own ability system for quite some time. The only problem was that it proved to be much more challenging to code than I originally hoped, but it didn't stop me from trying. Uh, yeah, that's one fine looking- Ability system. Why doesn't mine look like that? Ah! So this is Alpha 3.10, complete with three unique prototype abilities. The first is a teleportation spell, the second launches a homing projectile, and the third shoots an arrow in any given direction. Now although these abilities look functional enough, 
The code they ran on was utter garbage. But what's important is that this attempt helped me realize that you can break down an ability system into three main components. Now, I reckon this is interesting, so I can quickly explain it through an analogy. Start by imagining an average kid with a game console and some games. Also, this analogy works better when using an old school console like an N64. Okay, so this kid has a bunch of games, each of which contain all the code that game requires to run. However, by themselves, these games are useless unless you have a console to play them on. Here, the console doesn't care what game you place inside it, all it does is read and execute it. Now, before this kid can use the console, he probably also needs to ask for permission from his parents, who might have a set of requirements that must be met before he's allowed to play. So this same dynamic can be used in order to model an ability system. But now, think of the kid, games, console and parents as the player, ability code, operator and handler respectively. Now, to illustrate this process, let's say a game character wants to perform an ability. The character's code will first send the request to the handler, asking to perform that specific ability. The handler, who acts as the authority, then checks if the player meets all appropriate requirements to use the ability. If the player doesn't, the request is denied and nothing happens. But if it is accepted, the handler sends the request onto the operator, which then executes the ability's code. So, so with this better understanding of what I needed to do now, I began my second attempt at the ability system, which I completed in Alpha 4.0. But as you'll see in a bit, this wasn't my final attempt. Now a lot happened between Alpha 4.0 and 5.0, so I'm going to speed through all of the most interesting features that were added. subtle features I could go over, but this video will become an hour long. But one last thing that's worth going through from the 4.x versions is the third and final iteration of the ability system. This iteration introduces what I call dynamic ability states, which just means that abilities can now change what they do based on what's happening in the game. This dash ability is a good example of this functionality. Although it's a single ability, it actually does a few different things. When the player is grounded, it causes the player to slide in the direction they're facing, as well as have the opportunity to perform a slide jump if that ability is reactivated while sliding. If the player is instead airborne, they'll perform a short horizontal, diagonal or vertical dash based on what movement keys the player is currently holding down. And that brings us to Alpha 5.0, which is the most recent version, and this is the version that you saw at the start of the video. So I've learnt an insane amount since starting this project over three years ago. What is so amazing about games is that they combine so many different artistic disciplines. Despite making this project a lot more difficult than it needed to be, by having done everything myself, it counterintuitively made me more engaged in the project. And now, this may sound dramatic, but after learning the basics of art, animation and sound design, I now perceive colour, motion and music in a much richer way, so that was probably the most valuable aspect of this entire project. Now in case anyone's interested, I'll quickly go through the tools I used throughout this project. So, as I've mentioned earlier, this was programmed in C++ utilizing a tool called SDL. For animation, I began using Pencil2D, but then moved to Adobe Animate. The art was done using Paint.net and GIMP. The short amount of music you heard at the beginning of the video was composed in Traction T7. 
and pretty much all the sound effects were made using random materials I found lying around and then edited using Audacity. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something. I'll be coming out with another video soon that will cover my animation, art and music process. If you were interested by anything you saw in the video, you can add me on Discord, details are in the description. See ya! This video took way too long.